This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Tonight on the South Today, New Zealanders have voted yes on euthanasia, no on cannabis legislation, preliminary numbers show. Dunedin's first citizenship ceremony since COVID-19 lockdowns began has taken place, making 37 new citizens. And despite the absence of international runners, the Queenstown Marathon is set to take place with a strong local field. Kia ora, good evening, I'm Sophie Morris. New Zealanders have voted yes on euthanasia, no on cannabis legislation. Preliminary numbers are showing. With about 17% of votes still to be counted, 65.2% voted in support of the End of Life Choice Act, while 53.1% voted against the cannabis legislation and control bill. While the battle may be over, the fight goes on. Pro-cannabis campaigners are hopeful. Typically left-leaning special votes may get the cannabis legislation and control bill across the line. And I do think that it will have the chance to sway the vote um, more towards the yes, maybe not across the line. I would like to see it across the line, but uh, I think it will be enough that a government that's coming in will see that there is support for change and that um, you know it can be within their power to maybe not necessarily do the full legalisation and control, but certainly look at some big aspects that need to be addressed in the Misuse of Drugs Act. While disappointed at the provisional result, Oti based Make It Legal campaigner Bert Holmes says the referendum has ignited a very necessary conversation. This vote no is not going to stop any cannabis consumption that currently happens at the moment. So there is a massive mandate for change. As a country we've uh, grown up through our conversation, and we are now ready to address perhaps point by point as opposed to a broad spectrum approach to uh, addressing legislation. In a statement this afternoon, Justice Minister Andrew Little says special votes notwithstanding, the cannabis legislation and control bill will not be introduced as legislation by the Labour government this term. And on the other referendum, Little says the End of Life Choice Act has gone through the parliamentary process and has been given royal assent so it will come into effect from the final results on November the 6th, 2021. Assisted dying remains illegal in New Zealand until November 6th, 2021. The act will be administered by the Ministry of Health. In Dunedin, the South today. Police are investigating the circumstances surrounding the death of a woman in Invercargill yesterday. The woman was found dead at this Tay Street home, while police also examined a property in Grace Street. Police are yet to confirm whether or not they are carrying out a homicide investigation. Acting Detective Senior Sergeant Greg Beard confirmed police were called to a Grace Street address about 4pm yesterday after a woman was found dead at the property. Senior Sergeant Beard says the woman's death is being treated as unexplained while police work to understand the circumstances. Citizenship ceremonies weren't possible during restrictions due to COVID-19. Coronavirus was one of the factors influencing people's decisions to officially become New Zealand citizens in Dunedin yesterday. New Zealand's approach to COVID-19 has influenced people's decision to become New Zealand citizens. Oh absolutely, yeah. I've got um, lots of family back home in, um, in, in the UK uh, who are struggling quite a lot now with uh, constant lockdowns and misinformation and, um, yeah, and uh, the other problems coming along with Brexit and so on and so forth and, and New Zealand's extremely stable. His views are shared by some of the others choosing to become citizens who vow they'll never leave New Zealand. At our age we thought we'd better make an effort to become a citizen and because uh, of the current situation you see it's not good at all overseas so we thought it would be a good idea. I felt quite emotional about it really when we first got our certificates because I say this is home. We love the outdoors, we love tramping and boating and all the gorgeous things within 10 minutes of the city centre. We don't want to live anywhere else but Dunedin. I might as well do it. I'm here to stay. I have no intentions of returning home to the UK. 
this is my home. I've lived here longer than I've lived anywhere, basically. So, and I love Dunedin. It's a fantastic place to live. Dunedin Mayor Aaron Hawkins officiated yesterday's proceedings before meeting and greeting the city's newest locals. We decided that we would organise an event for people who had become citizens during COVID and, and celebrate their new status as, as citizens, not just of, of New Zealand, obviously, but here in Dunedin. Mayor Hawkins has had a tough week, with lengthy council meetings stretching into the night and a reoccurring issue around one council member. The Mayor says ceremonies like this shouldn't be too closely compared with some of his arguably more taxing tasks. The job of Mayor is in two parts. One is in terms of you know, governing uh, the council and, and, and the work that council does, and the other is uh, as a representative of your community doing, uh, doing public events. And it's unfair to compare the two functions. Uh, but this is, uh, this is certainly a, a, a more reliably uh, upbeat and uplifting experience than an eight-hour council meeting can be, yes. <laughs> 37 new New Zealanders were welcomed as citizens at yesterday afternoon's ceremony held in the Dunedin Centre. In Dunedin, the South today. Six fire crews were called to extinguish a garage fire in Kakanui near Oamaru this morning. A Fire and Emergency New Zealand spokesman says they were called to a garage fire on Kakanui Road about 11am. He said the garage was well involved when firefighters arrived. Fire crews from, fire crews from Kakanui, Western and Oamaru were called to the blaze, including three tankers and three other fire appliances. They managed to extinguish the blaze around 2pm this afternoon. The garage was extensively damaged and neighbours told the Otago Daily Times it was full of vintage vehicles. Wakatipi Basin's most popular sporting event, the Queenstown Marathon, is set to go ahead next month. Despite the absence this year of overseas runners, numbers for the event are looking good. Last year's Queenstown Marathon attracted over 12,000 entrants, with more than 3,000 from overseas. But this year, with borders closed due to COVID-19, it's hoped that New Zealanders will make up the shortfall. And indeed, 10,000 have already signed up for next month's event. Still a lot of Aucklanders coming down, a lot of people from Wellington. Obviously the Otago drive market regions are really strong. Um, but yeah, look, as I said, the, the domestic audience is filling up that gap that the, uh, the internationals are leaving with not being able to get to the event. So if it goes ahead, uh, fingers crossed, then uh, you know, we'll be looking good. The marathon is the largest annual sporting event in the Wakatipu area and is expected to inject more than $8 million into the local economy. But Beach says planning this year's event hasn't been straightforward. Yeah, look, it's pretty, it's pretty tricky to be honest. So um, you live on a bit of a knife edge waiting to see if there's going to be a change in uh, alert levels, another outbreak, etc. Uh, but at this stage, the country is in level one and we're looking uh, really good for an event uh, in November. And uh, yeah, we just have to hope there's no more outbreaks. And with COVID still a concern, Beach is hoping the government will start looking at mass gatherings on a case-by-case -case basis. I guess what we'd like to see is a more sophisticated approach to mass gatherings and look at the level of risk associated with each type of gathering. And if uh, the risk can be mitigated to an acceptable level according to health authorities, then we'd like to see um, mass gatherings up to certain limits still being able to proceed under those higher alert levels. So we've got those conversations underway with, uh, with government. The Queenstown Marathon is set to run on the 21st of November. In Queenstown, the South Today. Still to come on the South Today, Arrowtown gets named the most beautiful small town in New Zealand, and an overseas returnee starts a popular food shop in Roxburgh. Campbell Menswear. We're back in George Street on the corner of Hanover Street.
come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell Menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. If you're at risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. You've seen us in the street, now find us online. Check out shopon.org.nz. We have all sorts of treasures, from retro and vintage clothing to antiques, homewares and accessories. New items added every week. We're open 24-7. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell Menswear, it fits. Welcome back. Tunedin's North East Valley Anglican Church Hall was just demolished this week with some of the wood destined to be used for smoking meat. The old hall was bowled over with the help from a digger to make way for a Habitat for Humanity housing project. The building, seen here in February, was deemed to be a seismic hazard and a quote of $50,000 to strengthen it was considered too high. The hall's old ironwork was saved and will possibly be used in the restoration of the All Saints Anglican Hall in Cumberland Street. About two tonnes of remu and pine will also be recycled for minor projects around Dunedin. While the building's untreated Douglas fir timber trusses were full of borer, they won't go to waste either. Instead, the wood is set to be used in the production of smoked meat and ham. Arrowtown has been named the most beautiful small town in New Zealand at last night's Keep New Zealand Beautiful Awards. The Wakatipu Basin Township near Queenstown bet Waiheke for the most beautiful small town at a virtual awards ceremony last night. Queenstown Lakes District Councillor Heath Copland says he's very, very stoked on behalf of everyone in Arrowtown and says it comes at a time when the district could use a lift. The award recognises the efforts of environmental work by community groups, including wilding pine control, native planting and local predator control, as well as the council-led waste management effort. A Teviot Valley local back from overseas about six weeks ago has started a food shop that's only open on Fridays. The shop is already popular enough to keep its owner busy most of the week preparing items to be sold on Friday. Miller's flat local Steph Pierce is back from her OE and has started a shop in nearby Roxburgh that's only open on a Friday, selling all manner of delicious items for people to stock up on for their weekend. I wanted to do something that was for the locals, that people could just pop in once a week and get all their treats and treat themselves to some delicious wholesome food. She grew up on the Pierce Orchard, which is famous for its fruit and veg stall, and now supplies her with a lot of the produce used in her cooking. 
It was just normal life to have lots of colourful, fresh food around. Um, I took an interest in cooking since, I mean, I can't even remember, but I think I was six and I was making crates for my whole family. And she's already planted her own rhubarb, raspberries, herbs and other vegetables to help provide fresh ingredients for her to cook with. The food needs to be fresh and colourful and lots of new nutrients but also to look beautiful and like bring joy to your life. So I really focus on adding as much wholesome, nutritious stuff into the food but also making it look beautiful so it's like a treat. Local and Friday has only been open for about six weeks with clientele steadily building up each week and salads being one of the most popular items. In Roxburgh, the South Today. After the break on the South Today, we meet the Bannockburn artist depicting the transit of time in her works and we check out the weekend's weather. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. A poorly maintained heat pump can lose up to 35% of its output. The Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner team are experts. Their specially developed chemical wash is totally biodegradable. Call Mr. Heat Pump Cleaner and get the job done by the professionals. risk of developing melanoma skin cancer, you owe it to yourself to have a mole map. Mole map is coming to your area. Phone today to make an appointment. It could save your life. Step into Shop on Carol and discover a shop full of treasures. We have a fantastic range of vintage and retro clothes, upmarket clothing labels, collectible items, beautiful jewellery, quality linen and the best range of vintage haberdashery. Hi, our Campbell Menswear. We're back in George Street, on the corner of Hanover Street. Come and check out our big store. It's a big space, full of bargains. Now look at these shirts. There's shirts for everybody here. Look at these merino pullovers. Stacks of moleskins. Literally tons of trousers. Check out these big racks of sports jackets. Beautiful. Every reason, every season, we're proud to dress the region. Alex Campbell menswear, it fits. So come and check out Alex Campbell menswear. We're back on George Street in the old ANZ building. Ah, TV, our favourite babysitter. But it can be tough keeping up with what our tamariki are watching. Uh, luckily, the Broadcasting Standards Authority has made some smart changes to the classification labels. Ooh plus changes to the time of day certain rated shows will air and awesome new parental lock features, meaning your babysitter's job is safe. Find out more at safeviewing.co.nz. Welcome back. For the first time since World War II, the long-running New Zealand Open Golf Tournament has been cancelled. Played in recent years at Melbourne Resort and the neighbouring The Hills golf courses, the competition, which was set for next February, has been cancelled. After a meeting this week between organisers, sponsors and stakeholders, it's been decided there is still too much uncertainty about border restrictions. In recent years, the Open had become hugely important to the local Arrowtown economy. 
However, since coming out of lockdown, golf has become very popular around Queenstown, with a member at Millbrook saying the course was fully booked yesterday. Tracing the transit of time is the aim of art created by Odell Morshies of Bannockburn. Her paintings feature silhouettes of people, often against muted abstract backgrounds with broad brush strokes. Often she works from video to try and get the movement in her works. Bannockburn-based artist Odell Morsius began her creative journey in Dunedin and is set to bring her work back to where it all began. I had my first exhibition in a coffee shop in Dunedin when I was about 18, so hmm, 1988, 89, somewhere around there, why not? She completed a BA in Design and Art History at the University of Otago before heading to London where she studied her Masters at Wimbledon College. These days her artistic practice covers several disciplines, from sculpting with metal to painting and even audiovisual installations. I projected, I projected a video I'd made of all the people walking across the street in Hong Kong and I projected that um, in the ceiling of the wool shed and then I had this audio that ran with it that was the, um, Al Hamilton, the farmer from Kemuel Station, just um, moving a mob, mob of sheep, actually, probably just through the vineyard or, or somewhere I captured that um, footage. And, and so he was whistling to his dogs and, and I think, you know, yelling at them and you could hear the sheep running and, and it just, I don't know, it, it, it was a really, it, it worked really well and because people could hear the sheep and then they're like, well, where, where are the sheep? Oh, there's somebody whistling for their dogs. It was just a quiet little audio and, yeah, so they definitely, yeah, travelling definitely feeds my work, for sure. A sense of tradition is created by outlines and shadows, giving a sense of her works moving through the frame. From her studio in the middle of a vineyard in Bannockburn, she says the isolation can be an issue, and while she likes it, she misses international travel. Up till this year, I was doing a couple of international art fairs, and, and they were the, the highlights of the year, you know, work towards them, getting all the work over there, you know, finding some decent clothes to wear and, you know, going, going out for the, for the week or 10 days or whatever it took. While she currently can't travel overseas due to COVID-19, she can trek across the island and brings her next collection to an exhibition at the Dunedin Art Show from November 19th to the 22nd in Bannockburn, the South Today. And now recapping tonight's top stories on the South Today. Preliminary numbers show New Zealanders have voted yes on euthanasia and no on cannabis legislation with results out this afternoon. Dunedin's first citizenship ceremony since COVID-19 lockdowns began has taken place making 37 new citizens yesterday. And despite the absence of international runners, the Queenstown Marathon is set to take place with a strong local field. And time now for a look at what's happening in tomorrow's ODT. Welcome, Hayden. Good evening, Sophie. How, How are, you? are you? Very good. How are you? Good. Lots and lots of news happening today. Of course, today was the referendum result day, so that's our big focus. Mike Houlihan, who's been following the election all the way through, uh, wrapping up the situation. Obviously, a, a resounding yes on, on euthanasia, and that's a binding referendum. So we talked to a, a Colin Gavigan, who was one of the prominent voices in the yes to compassion movement, uh, understandably very very pleased and keen to look forward to that becoming law in about a year's time. And at the same time, cannabis uh, a lot closer, obviously. Provisionally, the no's have it, uh, but pretty close. And when the specials come in, it could be even closer. So uh, we also talked to people in the, the cannabis issue and what they feel about it and if they feel it could lead to any change at all down the line or what might happen. So that's our big spread. Um, Beer Fest in, in Dunedin is underway today. And, by the looks of it, plenty of people out and about. There was a long queue for the start of Beer Fest, so uh, we'll chat to organisers to see how that's going, have a page of page of photos of people enjoying themselves. Um, Invercargill, a, a, a body has been found, so we're looking, I'm not sure what the latest situation of, out of Invercargill is, but speaking to police to see what more details they can give us. Uh, and the DHB looking at the issue in central of the maternity hub. It's been an ongoing issue and a huge issue for for obviously the communities and all the expectant mothers in central Otago. Uh, they're finalising which option is the best for the future of that. So all that, and we've got Mike Houlihan's column, lots of sport, heaps of good reading.
Great. Well, thank you, Hayden. And time now for a look at the weather. Tonight's weather proudly brought to you by Mole Map. Beginning with a southern view, Dunedin on a great spring day. Looking at the situation, a cold front will move over southern districts tomorrow with a period of showers and gusty southwest winds, but clearing late in the day with westerly airflow arriving on Sunday. Starting at the northwest of the South Island, rain in Greymouth with 17 degrees and thunderstorms in Westport with 16. To the northeast, Partially cloudy and 23 degrees in Blenheim and thunderstorms and 19 degrees in Nelson. In Canterbury, partial cloud with 21 degrees in Kaikoura and 24 degrees in Christchurch and Ashburton. To the southern towns, fresh southwesterlies and showers with 15 degrees in the Catlins and 14 degrees in Balclutha, Lumsden and Gore. Travelling westwards to the central lakes, freshening southwesterlies and showers with 17 degrees in Wanaka and Alexandra, 15 degrees in Queenstown and 14 degrees in Tiano. To the northern towns on the coast, southwesterly change and showers later in the day with 24 degrees in Timaru and 23 in Oamaru. And land gusty westerlies, a few showers and 20 degrees in both Twizel and Omarama. In Dunedin, overcast tonight with northeasterlies and an overnight low of 13. Mostly cloudy with mild northeasterlies tomorrow morning and a few sunny periods developing. Change to colder, gusty, strong southwesterlies early afternoon with a period of rain and clearing later and winds easing. High of 21 and a low of 9. Fine on Sunday with sunny periods and some cold and moderate to fresh southwesterlies. A high of 17 and a low of 9. And in Invercargill, rain tonight with fresh northwesterlies and an overnight low of 12. Rain easing to showers tomorrow morning with colder southwesterlies freshening then decreasing. Showers clearing tomorrow evening, a high of 14 and a low of 8. Mostly cloudy with fresh westerly winds, a high of 15 and a low of 11. That's all for our news this Friday. For the latest news from the southern region, head online to odt.co.nz or follow Channel 39 on Facebook and YouTube. Thanks for joining us. Kaki Teano. This bulletin proudly brought to you in association with Alex Campbell's menswear. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.